Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 2nd of June. India and Israel adopt vision statement to boost defense ties. Indian officials visit Kabul for first Taliban meet oversee humanitarian aid. And Sri Lanka relaxes import restrictions on goods amid economic crisis. And now for all the details. India and Israel on Thursday adopted a vision statement to boost defense cooperation after talks between the defense ministers of both the countries in New Delhi. During the meeting, the two leaders discussed key issues pertaining to bilateral cooperation and regional and global scenarios. Israel's Defense Minister Benny Gantz was on Thursday accorded a tri-service guard of honor as he arrived in New Delhi's South Block for a meeting with his Indian counterpart, Rajnath Singh. Ties between the two countries have grown closer in the eight years since Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been in power, and a number of strategic, military and technology partnerships have been formed. During the bilateral talks, also attended by army officials and other dignitaries from both the nations, the two leaders adopted a vision statement to boost defence cooperation. Rajnath Singh later wrote on Twitter they both discussed key issues pertaining to defence cooperation and global and regional scenarios. We place great value on our strategic partnership with Israel, Singh said. Gantz on Thursday also visited the National War Memorial in New Delhi, a monument built in memory of slain soldiers, where he laid a wreath in front of the eternal flame burning in their memory. In yet another incident of targeted killing in just one week, a bank manager was shot dead by terrorists on Thursday in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. This is the eighth such killing in the valley, which has sparked outreach among the region's minority Hindu community. A bank manager was shot dead by terrorists on Thursday in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory the second such targeted killing within one week in the region after a female school teacher was shot dead in the same district on Monday. CCTV footage showed the victim being fired upon in point-blank range. He was identified as Vijay Kumar, the bank manager of Ilake Dehati Bank in Kulgam and hailed from northwestern Rajasthan state. This is the eighth targeted killing by terrorists this month with victims mainly from the Hindu minority community. Meanwhile, Hindu migrant employees and members of right-wing political organizations on Thursday held protests in Jammu city over the recent targeted killings by Pakistan-based terror outfits. They demanded relocation and a strict action against the culprits. <laughs> Residents in Srinagar city also held a demonstration and appealed for increased security for the minorities. Kashmir Valley has seen an upsurge in violence after the region's best-known separatist leader, Yasin Malik, was sentenced to life imprisonment this month. Moving on, India has sent a team of foreign ministry officials to Afghanistan's capital of Kabul for talks with senior members of the ruling Taliban, the first such meeting since the chaotic U.S. withdrawal last year. The team, headed by Joint Secretary J.P. Singh on Thursday, met with the Foreign Minister of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, Malvi Amir Khan Muttaki, in Kabul, and held discussions on diplomatic relations, bilateral trade and humanitarian assistance. Afghanistan's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Abdul Kahar Balki said on Twitter, Indian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi in a presser asserted that the visit is to oversee the delivery operations of India's massive humanitarian assistance to the war-torn country. When asked about recognizing the Taliban regime, Bakchi said, 
I think you are reading far too much into this visit. This visit is about humanitarian assistance to the people of Afghanistan. The South Asian nation pulled its officials out of Afghanistan last August and closed its embassy. Although New Delhi is keen to retain ties with the country, where its arch enemy Pakistan wields considerable influence. In news from Pakistan, Imran Khan, former Prime Minister and Pakistan Tehreek and Saaf Party chairman, has warned that if the establishment did not take the right decision, then the country would break into three parts. In an interview with the private television channel, he also predicted that the Pakistan army will be destroyed if it does not help him return to power. Pakistan's ousted former Prime Minister Imran Khan in an interview to a private TV channel on Wednesday warned that if the establishment does not take the right decision, then the country would break into three parts. PTI Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Chairman Imran Khan, who became the first PM to be ousted through a no trust motion in April, said the current political situation was a problem for the country as well as the establishment. The country will disintegrate if the military establishment doesn't intervene at present, he added. Since a no-confidence motion was moved against him, Khan has been on a warpath with the army, considered to be the most powerful institution in Pakistan. He even claimed that a conspiracy was afoot to ask Pakistan to give up its nuclear weapons owing to the dire economic condition. The PTI chairman also warned that the country would descend into a civil war if elections were not announced. Khan assured that he will march again towards Islamabad, but noted that his protest rally was dependent on the top court's decision. Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf had on Wednesday filed a petition with the Supreme Court seeking permission for a second long march to Islamabad. Since his ouster, Khan has been demanding snap elections and has repeatedly accused that the United States conspired with leaders of the incumbent government to topple him. Moving on, prominent Kashmiri activist Shaukat Ali Kashmiri has slammed Pakistan for slashing down the development budget for Pakistan-administered Kashmir by Rs 2.5 billion. He termed the situation in the illegally occupied region is alarming as it suffers for crumbling infrastructure with no provisions by Islamabad to improve education and health sector and create jobs. Chairman of UK PNP, United Kashmir People's National Party, Shaukat Ali Kashmiri has termed the situation in Pakistan-administered Kashmir as alarming after the Pakistani government has cut the development budget for the region by Rs 2.5 billion rupees and the normal budget by Rs 7 billion. In a series of tweets, the exiled Kashmiri activist cautioned the illegally occupied region has been suffering due to pathetic condition of schools and other infrastructure with no development in sight, contrary to claims by political leaders. He highlighted students in many areas are compelled to sit on the ground under open sky with no washrooms and no clean drinking water facilities. There is also an acute shortage of teachers, he said. Locals have long blamed Islamabad remains hardly bothered about their demands to repair dilapidated roads and boost connectivity, while lack of job opportunities have also fueled a sense of deprivation among the youth. Earlier this week, Abdul Majid Khan, Finance Minister of Pakistan, administered Kashmir, also warned the move could lead to a severe financial system unbalance if not reviewed. Scores of activists of the Free Balochistan movement recently held protests in London and Berlin cities on the anniversary of Pakistan's 1998 nuclear test in Balochistan. The protesters highlighted the current grave human rights situation in Balochistan and the impact of nuclear tests on human life and the climate. They said Baloch people are still suffering from diseases and other health complications due to nuclear radiation even after two decades. They appealed to the international community to ban Pakistan's nuclear programs. The activists said Pakistan is responsible for committing a war crime for deliberately choosing Balochistan's Changai district to test six nuclear bombs. The silence of the international community is emboldening repressive countries like Pakistan to continue human rights violations and to suppress the Baloch voices for freedom, they lamented. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has relaxed import restrictions on 369 items from food to medicine, the country's finance ministry has said. 
Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe, who also holds the Finance Ministry portfolio on Wednesday, requested all stakeholders to rationalize their importation on the basis of importance and urgency to save the foreign exchange as the nation faces its worst economic crisis. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Vikrama Singhe's government has taken measures to relax restrictions placed on the importation of 369 goods from food to medicine specified in the Extraordinary Gazette notification in March with effect from Thursday. PM Vikrama Singhe, in his capacity as Finance Minister, said in a statement on Wednesday that the restricted 369 items can be imported without import control, license effective. Given the difficult economic situation in the country, the government has requested all the stakeholders to rationalize their importation on the basis of importance and urgency to save the limited foreign exchange for the purpose of importation of essential commodities to ensure their uninterrupted supply. The island nation is facing the worst economic crisis since independence in 1948 with a severe shortage of foreign currency stalling imports of essentials including food, fuel and medicines. Earlier on Tuesday, Sri Lankan Agriculture Minister Mahinda Amravira urged farmers to plant rice despite the lack of fertilizers and fuel to prevent the food shortage from worsening amid the crisis. He executed confidence in the farmers and said the crisis can be overcome with contributions from everyone. Nepal's longest-running Ratu Machindranath Chariot Festival will soon be over as it reached Jawala Khel on Wednesday, the last spot where the chariot will be dismantled after observing Bhoto Jatra. The festival surrounds the old tradition of publicly displaying a jewel-studded vest, Bhoto, on the last day of the procession. Nepal's red god Ratu Machindranath this year has completed the tour of the ancient city of Lalitpur in a month. On Wednesday, the 32-foot-tall chariot of Machindranath, considered to be the god of rain and abundance, was pulled up to Jawala Khel, the last spot where the chariot will be dismantled after the procession of Bhoto Jatra. Thousands of devotees took part in the chariot procession, while residents from their buildings witnessed the grand event and religious proceedings. Though the chariot procession of Ratu Machendranath always starts by end of April or early May, but due to COVID-19 pandemic, the procession was stalled and later pushed to further dates multiple times. For this chatta to take place after two years, one, one of the was one of the most amazing thing that has taken place in the city of Lalitpur, let's say. Um, so I think uh, to organize this chatta was a bigger thing in itself. So I think it's really, really amazing. The sky-scrapping chariot goes around city roads and alleys across the sea of devotees and observed based on astronomical calculations. Sometimes it is holed up there for 10 to 15 days and even a month or more as it takes more days for the priests to look on to the auspicious times. The Lord is then taken back to Bhungmati, an ancient historical town of Lalitpur and the chariot is dismantled. The chariot procession of Ratu Machindranath is the longest procession in Nepal which runs for months depending widely on astronomy. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India and Israel adopt vision statement to boost defense ties. Indian officials visit Kabul for first Taliban meet to oversee humanitarian aid. And... Sri Lanka relaxes import restrictions on goods amid economic crisis. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.